everybody. Welcome back to Beyond the Veil Tarot and Astrology. My name is Candice Marie. Thank you for joining me. I'll be your astrologer for this day, this morning, this afternoon, depending on where you are. Some of you guys watch us on Monday. Um, but as I film this, it's um, Sunday, and I'm stoked because this is the weekly video that I do. That's all of the astro weather for the week ahead. I am pleased to announce this is going to be, I think, a rather productive week. Um, silent but deadly, but not in like a negative way, right? Maybe it's just me. I'm like super Scorpio. Um, there's a lot going on behind the scenes this week. Um, it may seem a little bit um, quieter than usual, but do not be fooled. There is some very, very, very positive uh, astrological aspects that are happening um, throughout the week, really building into early March. And I'm super stoked. Um, I was trying to find a way to get everything together this morning. I don't know. It's like I always get to the end of the month. And if there's like a new moon or a full moon coinciding with what will be the last video, it's like, okay, do I do the month ahead or do I do the lunation? So guess what? You guys get an extra video this week. I'm going to be um, doing a completely separate video for the new moon in Pisces because I have to tell you, the astro weather, there was just so much going on and it's almost going to feel like it's going to turn into a lesson. Um, and you guys are going to see some flow charts and some other things that I created because I'm telling you right now, some of my videos, because I'm so astrologically minded in how I communicate and express things. Have you guys seen Always Sunny in Philadelphia? You know, like that episode where like Charlie's going ham and he's like crazy and he's like writing all over the wall. Um, and he has like all these diagrams and things happening. The more that I wrote my notes this week, I was like, oh my God, it's, I'm just going to sound like a crazy person. So guess what? I created visuals. So we're going to talk about that um, and why this week is very, very, very positive and filled with lots of opportunities, but we have to actually initiate them. So we're going to talk about sextiles. Lots of aspects between uh, Neptune and Jupiter. Um, it's going to start building actually even as we get into March. Helpful sextiles between Scorpio, Capricorn, Capricorn, Pisces, Pisces, Taurus, and how it is a buildup of energy um, that is really allowing us to build our dreams, create, um, create new opportunities, build towards new realities. Um, and it's like the dream team that's kind of setting up. So I'm, I'm very excited to talk to you guys about that today. So let's start off by talking about sextiles um, and then I'll kind of get to the flow chart and then we'll look at the actual astrology chart. Um, sextiles are energies that are basically easy flowing. It's the energy of Venus. Um, it, it represents cooperation and flow. So in a sextile, when both planets are the same, um, either yin or yang, right? So you have to see that they're gonna be earth and water or fire and air. They fuel each other, if that makes sense. Earth and water kind of creates mud. Um, it's all of this emotion that can sometimes actually aid in us pushing forward and building and creating new things. Um, when we're seeing the um, sextiles between fire and air, we, you guys know air fuels fire, right? So it's like once you blow on it a little bit, you're going to see it blow up. We're mostly going to be talking about earth and water uh, sextiles today. Now, this energy is very compatible. It's not conflicting. Um, as a result, it's really it's easy to resolve conflict. And I think we've seen a fair share of conflict. We've seen a fair share of conflict really since Libra season 2021 when we had Mercury retrograde in Libra, um, when we had all kinds of squares to Pluto. And I kept telling you guys in the fall, watch what happens in December, January, February, and everything's going to get backed up and we're going to go, whoa, whoa, whoa. We need to kind of reorganize and restructure our goals for the future, right? All this backup in, in Capricorn. So... Um, what we're going to talk about today is going to be a pattern that I, I see in charts. Those of you guys who study astrology, we know there's all kinds of patterns that we can identify in a natal chart, but we're going to talk about it more in a sense of what's actually happening in the, the cosmos. So what I've noticed is this buildup of like a locomotive um, energy, and it's basically driving something forward. So the locomotive energy is going to be um, a, just a series of planets 
that are all making aspects and sextiles to each other that's pushing everything along, right? Similar to like a, like a train, we see that we have, you know, the, the, uh, the front of the train and everything that's kind of fueling that, whether they're throwing in coal, whatever they're throwing in to kind of pull everything else along. Um, and then the trailing planet would be like the very end of that train, that last boxcar that is actually almost gonna have like a slingshot effect that's gonna push everything forward to help us achieve our goal. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know a lot about trains. <laughs> My dad does, but I don't. Uh, so I'm probably gonna get scolded for this one. Um, but it's to help you focus on staying determined and being able to um, push, for your push forward your effort um, and using all of the energy really actually in the back end to be able to push um, and create um, some huge shift that I'm actually feeling like we're gonna see more in May of 2022 and then inevitably down the line May of next year. So the leading planet actually indicates where and how you're going to apply this energy. So when we look at the chart, what you're actually going to see is most of the leading planets are the planets that are actually in um, in Taurus. So we've got the North Node in Taurus right now. Um, Uranus is in Taurus right now. I feel like I am on a uh, repeat constantly telling people, hey guys, wait till you get till May and you see that all these physical changes happen and it's been this um, build up, this process that we've really been working on December, January, February, March, April, and then boom, once we have the eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio in April, May, we're gonna see those changes. Once we see conjunctions to Uranus in the North Node, we're gonna go, ah, this is what I've created, right? Okay, so um, this is all moving basically also um, the, the direction of where things are going is going to be um, counterclockwise. So we're seeing it moving this way, okay? Maybe it's backwards on the camera. I don't know how these things work. So um, in order, and I wanna just talk about this a little bit as I bring up my image. So let me go ahead and bring up the image that I wanna share with you guys. And then also my notes. You're not gonna see me, so don't worry, it's all good. You don't need to see me, just follow my voice. <laughs> That's creepy. Um, okay, so this is this handy dandy little flow chart. Before I get into the flow chart, um, I wanna talk to you a little bit about what is going on here. So these are the major players. Um, I'll give you guys a second. If you wanna pull up your chart, you can hit pause, grab your natal chart, pull it up on your phone, look at it on your laptop, pull it on a piece of paper if you're old school, grab a pen, uh, and you may even wanna take a screenshot of this screen. Now, if you follow my social media, maybe I'll post it. Can you guys tell that I have sun conjunct Mercury and I'm becoming super OCD and uh, organized? I'm trying. Okay, so I want you to look at where Scorpio, Capricorn, Pisces, and Taurus are in your chart, okay? They're gonna be in order. So it's gonna go from Scorpio to Taurus. All right, so um, I wanna talk to you guys a little bit about the sextile relationships that each sign is gonna have, and then I'm gonna go through this flow chart. Hopefully this makes sense. When we see sextiles happening between um, planets in Scorpio and Capricorn, this is going to represent ambition, passion, and long range visionary goals, right? So in a way, what you're gonna see is almost like this is like a, a production line or a streamline where all of these signs and all of these planets, they need each other to be able to carry out whatever is going on in Taurus, right? So Scorpio says to Capricorn, hey, um, you know, I'm scared. I wanna create this change. I wanna release this pain. I wanna let things go. I can't bear to do this anymore. I don't wanna keep hurting and I don't want to experience loss or I'm afraid of change, right? So Scorpio hands those concerns over to Capricorn. And uh, Capricorn focuses very much on saying, all right, let's kind of orchestrate something. Let's, let's create a plan. I love that Scorpio and Capricorn, I feel like are the two signs of the Zodiac that are like the most control oriented, like they get shit done. Um, so currently what we have in Scorpio is the South Node. Okay, so the South Node's in Scorpio right now. And um, with the South Node being in Scorpio, what is it bringing up? It's bringing up karmic pain, fear, loss, pain, death. There's a lot of pain in there. Releasing toxicity or trauma, rehashing abuse, getting to the core of where 
we have been hurt. Okay, so that's what's happening right now. No, we're going to be having sextiles going on between Scorpio, South Node, and planets in Capricorn right now until mid-May of 2022. We're also going to be seeing that if we do that work where we're just admitting what we're afraid of or what we're afraid of losing, wherever Capricorn is in your chart, it's been working hard, man. There are sextiles going on right now. There's this buildup that's going to happen clear till about the beginning of March between Mars and Venus and Pluto. Okay, so we'll get to that in a second. Now, we're also going to see that there's going to be trines. So while we have planets in Scorpio, it's going to be making trines to planets in Pisces. Pisces is a sister sign. Okay, so while Cancer focuses more on the emotional, the home, the private, the, the feeling, the past, Scorpio goes, oh, I know it hurts. It was difficult. It was scary. But now I'm going to kind of give this energy over to Pisces. And Pisces is going to say, it's okay. We learned the lesson. We're clearing karma. We're working out of um, old patterns. We're learning with all the planets in Pisces right now to find the faith and a new spiritual belief. That is the purpose, guys. I'm gonna keep beating that drum all month long. So now we're gonna move down to the bottom part of the portion that is outlined in red. Um, you guys see it down there. And this is the energy that is of Venus, Mars, and Pluto. So we're just taking all that energy from Scorpio, handing it to Capricorn. This is what Capricorn does with it. So Venus, Mars, and Pluto in Capricorn. It's goal-oriented. It is future planning. It is courageous. Those of you guys who have Mars or Venus in Capricorn, you know that um, that energy doesn't fuck around. It says we're going to get the job done. So it doesn't mind kind of rolling up its sleeves and going, all right, we're going to work on this. It's been happening for two months. So whatever, wherever Capricorn is in your chart, take a look because that's where the, the cleaning up has been, been going on. And it has not been easy because Pluto's been there. Um, but it's very courageous, passionate about creating a new legacy, collaboration with others, team efforts to get to the root issues that threaten the foundation of change. Let me say that again. Team efforts that get to the root issues that threaten the foundation of change. This is Pluto. Working on control within ourselves, what we can control. Not controlling other people, not controlling the narrative, not controlling the outside world. We may feel like the outside world is controlling us. We may feel very limited by our responsibilities, our jobs, our um, roles as parents, as bosses, as leaders. We might feel like um, the world is kind of closing in on us. The micro is the macro. So a lot of what we're seeing in the world, this um, kind of issues with corruption and power plays and issues with government and kind of strong arming things. A lot of us are also having similar ex ex experiences where we're white knuckling situations in our life. So look at where Capricorn is, but it doesn't have to be that way. And right now is a very, very important time astrologically between now and March 5th, because we are going to be seeing, like I said, the sextiles to Scorpio releasing fears of the unknown. So Capricorn's going to go, look, I know you don't know what the future looks like. I know you've been hurt. I know it's been difficult, but we're moving past that. We're going to let go of all that garbage. We're going to let go of the toxicity. Okay, so if you have any major Scorpio or Capricorn placements, pay attention. And also Capricorn is going to carry this energy and then pass it on to Pisces. And it's going to say, hey, I have dynamic plans to make my dreams come true, but you have to believe it. Here's the blueprint. It'll then make trines to the North Node in Taurus, building a beautiful, loving, and abundant future. Guys, Mars and Venus are so important. The South Node is in Scorpio. So any Pluto Mars aspects is like detoxifying, clearing. It's, it's anger, it's rage, it's, um, uh, it's fear. Anything that's coming up right now that's kind of ugly. Remember, everything is a derivative of fear or love. So it does, if it doesn't feel like love, North Node in Taurus, if it doesn't feel good, if it's not really making your heart sing, we gotta let it go. Because if the North Node is in Taurus, it wants to help us build towards having a more loving, secure, abundant, pleasurable future. All right, so now all of this energy gets carried over. We're gonna look at the top part where you see the blue outline. From now to mid-May, we have so many planets in Pisces. Guys, we only see the Neptune-Jupiter conjunction maybe, I think it's like every 180 or odd years or so, I believe. I'll double check that, but it's not often that we have this conjunction. 
So while all these planets are in Pisces, what is it manifesting, right? We're in Pisces season. The sun's there, Jupiter's there, Neptune's there, newfound spiritual beliefs. We have to learn that we have to believe it before we see it. Neptune rules invisible worlds, right? Here's an example. We can't see all of the fish in the sea, right? From where we're at right now. Even when you're standing and you're looking at the beach, do you see all the fish? Do you see the dolphins? Do you see everything? I mean, unless you're like super, super blessed and you live in the Virgin Islands or the Bahamas or somewhere where you're like, yeah, I can see all that stuff. Like, okay, invite me over. Um, but we, you don't see that stuff, but we know it exists, right? That's Neptune. The same way we don't see spirit, but we know it's around. The same way we don't see a higher source, but we know there's something pulling the strings and orchestrating things, right? So it's similar to that energy. I want you guys to take this concept that, oh, you have to believe it, you know, you have to see it to believe it. That's fucking bullshit. That's not, we're not taking that into the future. You have to believe it before you see it. So many people right now are getting so frustrated saying to me, I just don't see it and how can that happen? And it's not possible and it makes me wanna hang up my phone. But I'm really trying not to, I'm trying to be patient. And maybe this is coming from me because I have Saturn conjunct Neptune. Exact. It opposes Jupiter in my chart. I'm like the poster child for like, you don't see it yet, but it's going to happen. And I tell people that all the time. Just believe in what your vision is. Believe in what the future could be. Believe that it could turn out way better than you imagined. When you get yourself into a point of doubting going, it's just not going to happen. But what if it does? And what if it turns out a lot better than you think? And what if anything and everything that's falling apart right now is falling apart because it's actually you trying to get to the manifestational goal. We really need to be in a state of meditating, manifesting, practicing mindfulness, resting, sleeping, praying, listening to music, relaxing. Take March off because ain't not much going to get done until we do the healing and you can't rush the healing process. So we have to also realize that we're dissolving fears revolving around abandonment, right? Pisces is to be alone, cast aside. Think of like the nun, the priest, the priestess, you know, the lone wolf, the person who consciously says, ah, I'm gonna take a step back. I know that even though I'm alone, I'm connected to everybody. That's been the process. That's been the lesson of this entire spiritual experiment with all the sextiles between planets in Capricorn and Pisces really for the last two years. You can, you can break things down. You can make it seem as if we're all separate. You can put everybody in their houses. You can do all of this stuff that makes us feel like we're isolated, but in some weird way, we've actually become better connected. More meditators, more people giving back, more people helping others. And we're also accessing past life wisdom because this represents the 12th house and where we've been in the past, these secret untapped talents, the dreams we have, the things that come back from our past life memories, right, are very strong. We're going to access a lot of this this month and learn to move past self-sabotaging tendencies, being compassionate, self-aware, and using peace to manifest change. We want to use peace to manifest change, right? So from now to mid-May, we're going to see trines from planets in Pisces to Scorpio, Healing trauma, letting it dissolve, going, it's okay, you can let it go now. You know, it's okay to cry, it's okay to rest, it's okay to go to therapy, it's okay to get healing, it's okay to let it go, to acknowledge it. For a lot of people, it's acknowledging that they've been through some very traumatic events over the last two years, over the last two decades. <laughs> However long you've been going through it, it's okay. There's been a lot going on and on a soul level. It's so overwhelming. Pisces can sometimes have a very difficult time. You know if you have your Sun in Pisces, your Moon in Pisces, your Mercury in Pisces, your Venus in Pisces. Sometimes getting outside of that emotional box can be very difficult and explaining how you're feeling. As I say this, I think of like Ron Burgundy and he's like trapped in the phone booth and he's like, I'm trapped in a glass case of emotion. Like that's, that's Pisces placements. Now it's gonna make sextiles to Capricorn, which is basically gonna be following the agreed upon plans. Pisces is gonna say, got it, Capricorn, I got it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have a, I have an outline, I have a blueprint. And together they become the dream team. So now you've got Capricorn working with Pisces, and Capricorn isn't necessarily being super bossy. It's like, hey Pisces, here, go and create it. I know you're the mystic, I know you're the artist, I know you're the poet, I know you're the musician, I know that 
you know, you're, you can really create this, you can heal this, or you can dissolve this. Here you go. Which is kind of weird, because for Capricorn to, to pass something on to Pisces and trust Pisces to handle it, there's a lot of support between the two, right? In many ways, also, I think this is going to materialize as a lot of people within the corporate world and big business are going to start turning to artists. They're going to start saying, how can we unite? How can we make this better? How can we heal? Also, we will be seeing that all of this energy in Pisces will create sextiles to Taurus, where we have the North Node, where we have Uranus, where we're changing and innovating our future, security, abundance, and talents. When it makes these sextiles to Taurus, we're using love and manifestation to come into a new sense of security, right? So it's the dream, the idea, the bright opportunity that shows up that makes, it go, makes us go, aha, I'm going to build this. I'm going to create this. Isn't this beautiful? I saw this, you know, my tarot cards told me to do this. And then all of this energy is going to funnel into this orange box down here. And from the end of May through June of 2022, that's when we really start to see things physically come together, guys. Okay because now we're in Taurus. And once we're moving into Taurus season, this spring, not only do we have all these planets, the Earth's in Taurus, we're also gonna see, you know, Venus will be in Taurus, Mercury will be in Taurus, it'll be a Mercury retrograde in Taurus. But we're also gonna see that it's all gonna trine Pluto and it's almost like Taurus is gonna give Capricorn a high five and go, thank you for firing me. Thank you for killing off the relationship. Thank you for helping me deal with the trauma. Thank you for taking out the trash. Right? Thank you for strong arming certain situations until I actually learn that I can't fight back, that I have to use love and patience. Now, in the spring of 2022, eclipses are going to wrap in Taurus and Scorpio. We're going to have one at the end of April and the one in mid May. Mercury will retrograde in Gemini back into Taurus. Venus moves into Taurus, physical change have taken place. We move further into the North Node in Taurus. We realize that this is what we have been working hard to accomplish. Many things won't materialize until May. Many things won't make sense until May, right? Why certain things had to be dealt with, why we had to spend the first three, four, almost five months of 2022 backed up, discombobulated, hurt, ending things, cutting things off. It certainly didn't feel like the new year, right? It almost feels like we got cosmically bitch slapped with eclipses for the first three months. But it's okay because the whole purpose of this is for us to get better grounded, guys, right? The North Node in Taurus, it's about physical embodiment. How do we feel in our body, right? How do we feel in our body? Um, are we making art? Are we making more love? Are we living a life of beauty? Do we feel like we have more security? Do we have more abundance? Is there more art, creativity, pleasure, right? That's the MO. This is where we're going. And so what you guys are going to see is this whole range of energy from Scorpio is all building. So it's going to land in wherever Taurus is in your chart and it's going to start showing up. For some of you guys, it'll be after collective months of internal work. Finally, you're ready to start something new. For some of you guys, it's been about several months of really feeling this sluggish energy and hitting roadblocks until finally stuff starts kind of blooming in May. It just depends, right? But Venus is so important, guys. This is a six numerology year. This is a year ruled by Venus. I don't care what happens in the world. Everything is literally to get us to more money, better health, better relationships, pleasure, learning more about pleasure, indulgence and having security, having the basic necessities. Taurus knows how to say, hey, I'm gonna make sure I have a roof over my head and food on the table and clothes on my back and I know that I can grow things and really harvest my own natural talent. Some of you guys are gonna have to learn how to do that. Some of you guys are gonna have to learn to grow your own food. Some of you guys are gonna have to learn to cook your own food. Some of you guys are gonna have to learn to paint your own nails, right? Cosmetic things, things that that make us feel good. Some of you guys really need to invest in face masks, right? All of these tourist things that teach us that it's very, very, very important to focus on beauty and aesthetics. And that's what I love about the aspects between um, Taurus and Pisces, especially 
music, films, art, right? Um, anything that's going to um, almost be, it'll make sense. It's almost like this whole passive romance, it won't be in vain. Because I keep telling you guys, there's this huge renaissance coming when it comes to uh, music and art and film, food, money, right? And that's what always happens after we've gone through a bit of like a dark period. Now, I have to tell you guys, if you're like, Candace, this is great. I'll believe it when I see it. You know, tell me when change is going to happen. I want you guys to write down, go into your calendar for next year, make a note, whatever you got to do. Focus on where May 17th through May 19th, 2023 is, okay? On these days is right when we see the sun coming to 26 degrees of Taurus, so it's been where that eclipse was in mid-November. We're also going to see that the North Node is still gonna be in Taurus, so actually the North Node will just barely be in Taurus next spring, but Jupiter will be conjunct the North Node. So you will really reap the benefits of some of this stuff next year. So we don't wanna screw around, we don't wanna waste our time. If you guys need to learn about better managing skills of your resources, if you guys need to learn how to plant a garden, if you need to learn how to properly do your makeup, if you need to learn how to cook a certain dish, these are all Taurus things. Learn how to do it. Whatever you're focusing on that brings you pleasure this year, okay? It may not always be money, right? Because what we're gonna realize is that the value of money is gonna change a lot this year, next year, a lot. And values can't always be determined by a price tag or a dollar sign. Um, so I think a lot of people are gonna start kind of going, you know what, I just wanna paint, or I just wanna interior decorate, or I just wanna rearrange flowers, or redesign furniture, whatever you wanna do. Does it bring you pleasure? Are you learning a new talent? Is it something that is going to allow you to be more self-sustainable? Okay, this won't make sense till next year. But if you guys start doing this stuff now, you're gonna find that it really starts to make sense May, June of 2022. Right, may even start kind of coming together and you start working on that and you start kind of developing those new skills. But by the time we get to May 17th through the 19th of 2023, when Jupiter is in Taurus conjunct the North Node, we are going to have a much, much more beautiful life. Now outside of this, kind of going back to me and then also my screen at some point, um, outside of this, something else I wanna tell you guys, and I read this actually, um, I read this, let me pull it up. Give me one second. Uh, it, was a, it was something I reposted, so it's not mine. I cannot take credit for it. Um, but it was just like, wow, that was put so simply because I have a tendency to just sometimes over talk. Okay, uh, looks like this came from somebody rude underscore astrology. Look at where Aquarius and Taurus is in your chart right now. Go ahead, take a look. These are the areas where you're refusing to compromise and be low-balled. Your soul is asking for recognition in those areas. Anything or anyone unaligned with this is going to fall away and you should let it. So look at where Taurus is. Look at where Aquarius is. Look at both. Yes, they square each other, but to be honest with you, we got to do a lot of the Aquarius stuff right now. We've seen it in this last Aquarius season. This last Aquarius season was no joke. That was pretty gnarly. That was a very difficult one. Part of it was we had Saturn smack dab in the middle of everything, um, and we've had a lot of planets go through there really throughout this last year. Pretty soon, we're going to see conjunctions to Saturn again, planets square the nodes, and Mars and Venus are going to be coming in there pretty soon. So what this is going to do, not this, not this week, but soon, is remind us of the plan. It's like, no, 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 no. I kind of talked about this in past videos. When we're white knuckling things or when we kind of feel like we're freaking out, falling back into old patterns, Aquarius is a fixed sign. It's gonna go, no, we, accre we agreed to this. We're doing this. This is what we're doing. And it may feel uncomfortable this week because we're gonna have some, um, some, some Mercury conjunctions to Saturn around the time of the new moon. We're also gonna see that Mercury is gonna square Uranus. So we're gonna see that friction, that pushback, that's like a difference of, oh no, I don't wanna touch that, I don't agree with that, but we have to stay the course. Hopefully that makes sense, hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Um, I felt like if I was just explaining it to you, it wasn't actually going to, you know, wasn't actually gonna make sense. 
Um, what I what I really really love though is that you know with the aspects from Pisces to Taurus is that the more that we're focusing on our beliefs, our prayers, our dreams, our visions, healing, intuition, spiritual knowledge, past life information, karmic stuff, the more that we're moving into the North Node where Uranus is, and um, it's gonna manifest as physical changes, innovations, embodiment, showing up in a different way, right? Showing up in a different way, all right. So let's get to the astro weather. Let's talk about this week. Um, today kicks off the 20th with the moon in Libra. Oh, it's been in a square to Mars and Venus and also Pluto later this evening. Uh, friction's in the air, you know? Usually when the moon's in Libra, we want to partner, we want to get along, we want to come together. Mars and Venus is like, mm, maybe not. It can be good for um, chemistry. It can create a little friction. But my concern is, is that when the moon is in a square, it's almost like um, relating date time, things like that are kind of getting lost in the mix of, yeah, but I got to work on this. I got to do this thing. It's harder for us to partner because we're working on this thing right now. Um, and then the moon will actually come into a square with Pluto later this evening, Sunday night. Uh, watch for the friction. You know, moon square Pluto is like, you know, sometimes working together is not the most romantic thing. Sometimes it's not sexy to be doing work on Sunday. It is what it is, right? Um, and just friction revolving around relating to other people. Tomorrow, things get better, right? Moon moves into Scorpio. Um, it's going to be a little bit easier because we're going to see that the moon is going to make trines to the sun in Pisces. Pisces season, welcome. Um, it kicked off for me going to a rock show and double fisting beers. I was like, oh yeah, it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely Pisces season. <laughs> so it's not screwing around this year. Um, but when the sun and the moon trine, there was gonna be an emotional release, really the, the 21st and the 22nd. And I think that this is something that's gonna be um, nice after Sunday. It's kind of this uh, release what's gonna happen. Going into the 22nd, then the moon is coming into conjunction with the south node. So on one hand, we can be reflecting on the past. We can go, oh, been here, done that before. But we want to let go of um, old emotional thought patterning, uh, reacting, being kind of suspicious, being jealous, being possessive, all those fun Scorpio traits. Um, and it's going to conjunct the south node and it's going to trine Jupiter and Neptune. So there's a lot of healing. There can be some emotional release. Guys, water, right? Baths, soaking, going to the beach, anything like that. Whenever you're dealing with these trines, right? It's gonna be very helpful. Um, staying hydrated even, anything like that. Soaking, hot tubs, whatever. Um, this is also going to start kind of kicking in that sextile that I told you about. So on the 22nd, I want you guys to watch for kind of being on edge. and and going, um, oh, nope, I can't, let, I can't let that get in the way any longer. I'm gonna be aware of it, I'm present with it, I'm letting it go. Because I think we're gonna start seeing where maybe there's risk of falling back into old emotional uh, reactions that are just not healthy, right? With the sextile also to Mars and Venus, it's like you might have to remind somebody else, you might have to remind yourself, no, we're not doing this anymore, it doesn't have to be like this. We don't respond out of fear, right? Um, then we are going to have, like I said, karmic release, moving out of old subconscious patterns. On the 23rd, we're going to see Mars and Capricorn, Sex, Hell, Neptune, and Pisces. We've been feeling this energy for a little while, but now it's exact. I'm very curious um, how it's going to manifest in a couple days because that sextile being at 22 degrees is a Capricorn degree. And it's like, nope, we're doing the work. Remember what we talked about? You know, we, we, don't, we don't see it yet. What we're building, we're building, we're building. Um, working towards going into a direction where um, our dreams are actually starting to come to light. It can be a good idea to work with screens, right? Create vision boards, change your screens on your desktop, change your screens on your laptop, change your lock screen, whatever your goal is, go and create something artistic and put it somewhere you're gonna see it all the time, just to remind you and keep that motivation going. Listen to motivational speakers, watch motivational lectures, um, anything that's going to inspire you to go, nope, I'm staying the path, I'm just gonna keep going. I like also on this day, and it'll kind of bleed into um, the 24th as well, the moon moves into Sag, 
okay? So it's it's gonna really highlight Jupiter now because we're already in Pisces season. We look at Jupiter and Neptune, but the moon goes into Sag, creating change, changing what we believe in. So the moon in Sag is gonna be like, do you still believe in that? You know, is that a part of your beliefs? Is that something that um, is possible? So you might get a little, you might get a little pushback. It might be um, questioning uh, how the story has been and whether or not you're carrying that story into the future, right? Um, then on the 24th this week, Venus in Capricorn joins the mix and she starts sextiling Neptune. Mars and Venus are neck and neck. It's almost like Mars pulls ahead and goes, okay, I'm doing the work for you. And then eventually Venus will pull ahead. She'll kind of leave the orbit of Mars um, in a couple of weeks. But those two being in a sextile, music, dancing, like if you're at the office and it's stuffy and you guys have a lot of work to get done, put the music on. Put music on that's going to help uh, vibrationally kind of move things. Um, remind each other of what the what the goal is, where you guys are going. It, it almost like reminds me of like, you know, something that's going on in the office. That's like, okay, guys, you know, this is the goal. By the time we get to March, you know, we're all going on the cruise ship. <laughs> like, you know, we're all going on the trip together or, you know, the Girl Scouts that are selling all the cookies and they're like, okay, our goal is to be able to, you know, go to Disneyland. Pisces is very much that dream. So you have to keep reminding each other, we're not seeing it yet, but none of this work is in vain. The dream team is really setting up with some of these sextiles and then um, later in the week when the moon joins. So I'm loving the moon square Jupiter. I'm loving the moon square Neptune. I feel like that's helping keep our hearts open, stay compassionate, be open, willing to do the work, believing in magic. It's funny, I was like thinking about when I was like getting ready for this video and I was like, I just kept hearing that song over and over. I'm tone deaf, so I'm not gonna like sing sing, but you know the song that goes, do you believe in magic, right? Tone deaf, sorry. Um, but that song keeps coming up for me for some reason. And I'm like, why is this coming up? When you think about it and if you read the lyrics, it's talking about that um, if you can feel it, you know, that it can come to be. That's what we're gonna start noticing. It's like, oh, something's different. I'm moving to a different beat. Some people might actually have to move it out of their bodies. Yoga, water, meditation, all of these things can be very helpful. Um, just watch, you know, one thing I would say on the 24th that that is the friction, or it can be the bright idea, um, is that we see the return of Mercury coming into a square with Uranus. So Mercury is in Aquarius. It's coming into a square with Uranus. The last time we saw this was back between January 12th and January 16th. Now, it can manifest as a difference of opinions, values, conflicts. Watch for travel issues, delays. Watch for issues while you're dri driving, tech issues, glitches. You know, that's not fun. Sorry. The moon's sextiling it, though, so it's going, you know, Maybe we don't agree, but that's okay. You know, I learned something. Thanks for the conversation. There's, there's something about the moon that's aiding that process. You may feel like a little bit of the Mercury retrograde is coming back up, or maybe you're working it out. If you are a Mercury ruled chart, so if you're like a Gemini or a Virgo rising, watch out. If you're in a uh, Mercury annual perfection year, watch out, because this is gonna manifest as being like, actually, we need to do things different, or we don't agree but that's okay. And one thing that's come up for me a lot thinking about this is some agreements you cannot honor if they don't align with the new version of you. So if you've been to hell and back the last three months and you're like, I'm not fucking doing this anymore, sorry. I can't honor this agreement. I can't honor that commitment. I can't honor this relationship. It's not an alignment. We're gonna see a lot of this stuff that's gonna be coming up as a result of the square. Ironically, Shortly after, when we have the new moon next week, Mercury will be conjunct Saturn. So it'll be like, no, I'm committing to this. This is what I'm committing to. And I would really encourage you guys not to fight or have resistance revolving around some of these conversations that are brewing, because by the time it conjuncts Saturn at the new moon, we're really committing to a new uh, belief, right? Aquarius is um, going to be 12 to Pisces, 12 houses to Pisces. So we're meditating, we're committing to a new belief and doing the research and digging deep. And maybe we feel like we're keeping some things private. We're not ready to share it quite yet, but we're committed to it. 
by the time Mercury squares the nodes next month, you're gonna have to have that conversation inevitably. There is no getting around that, guys. Now planets are gonna start squaring the nodes, so it's gonna say, here it is. This is what I think, this is what I have to say. And it's different and it's weird because it's Aquarius and it's gonna require team effort in order to manifest some of these changes. We do not, do not, do not want to, on any circumstance, compromise when we see uh, squares between the fixed signs. So actually the changes in Aquarius and the changes in, in, um, Cap in Taurus can coexist. They can't. Until we get all the planets out of conjunction with Saturn and out of the square to the nodes, by the time we get into the spring, we can put it into action. So you don't want to wait till those squares happen to force you to make changes. Um, then we have on the 25th, this is where things get colorful. Moon moves into Capricorn and it's going to start sextiling the sun and Jupiter later in the day. So we're working together actively. It's like, okay, we had that bump in the road, but we're just going to keep things moving. Very productive day, 25th, 26th, 27th, right before we come into the dark of the moon, which will be right before the new moon in Pisces. So look for those positive opportunities, those breakthroughs, you know, making things happen, coming together, helping people. But it's going to be the 26th that I'm really watching because the moon in Capricorn will conjunct Venus, Mars, and Pluto. Whoa. Whoa. So it's like, okay, here we go. Full steam ahead. This is what we're doing. Um, moon, Venus is nice. Moon, Venus, Mars, Pluto is like, nope, this is what we're doing. So it's going to be very active, very productive. It's all in a trine to the North Node in Taurus. It's like, we're getting ready to execute something. Something's getting ready to be rolled out. This is the plan. Now, those of you guys who are like, what's going to happen in the world? Go and watch my Pluto in America video. Watch my Pluto return the first one. Watch my Pluto return the second one. I told you guys what was going to start happening. Lots of military mobilization, lots of cops. We're going to start seeing lots of people um, possibly coming together because all these Aquarian energies are building where people are going to want to be protesting. People are going to want to be coming out and speaking out against um, limitation or against um, just anything, anything revolving uh, censorship. And because Capricorn is behind Saturn, we're not seeing what's going to be released for probably about another month or so. Um, but we're going to start seeing large groups of either military mobilization around the world. We're going to start seeing it in the United States. We're going to start seeing a lot of people in uniform. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see what they do on the 25th, 26th, and 27th. Because the moon being in Capricorn seems to suggest that um, there's something ramping up. T tensions and passions are ramping up right? Now it's also in a sextile to Neptune. So we don't physically see it yet. We're not seeing the physical purpose yet, right? So powers at bay are getting stronger. They're trying to kind of strong arm situations. Now we're going to see the sextile also from all of these planets to the south node. So we can see fear come back up. Capricorn is going to go, no, 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 no. Nope. This is the plan. We're sticking to the plan. We're sticking to the routine. We're also going to use sextiles to Jupiter and Neptune and Pisces. This is like that magical energy that I was telling you guys about that you're going to start seeing showing up. That's the flow of events, right? And it's all helping you kind of um, stay the path, commit to the plan, even if you can't see where you're going quite yet. Then on the 27th, the moon in the afternoon hours moves into Aquarius. You guys are definitely going to feel that shift. Um, and it's going to be the dark moon period. So it's just prior to the new moon in Pisces, a really great time to reflect on what you've cleared a couple days prior, what you moved through, what broke down, what died, what you let go, what you released, right? And this is going to be very important because I got to tell you guys, probably one of my favorite new moons all year is going to be the new moon in Pisces. So I'm going to do a video on it, but it'll be on March 2nd. Um, and I have been waiting to create things, to launch things with this election date, right? If this were me, I would wait till the moon moves into Taurus because it's going to be a little bit more solid. So like the 6th or the 7th, things are going to stick more. But from March 2nd on, it's almost like, okay, that's all over. Maybe your job ended. Maybe you left your marriage. Maybe your car broke down. You don't know how you're going to get around. Whatever happened, something broke down. But you're like, that's okay, I'm keeping the faith. It's gonna be fine, this is a part of the plan. You know, everything's working out. I know that I'm covered. Belief is so, so very important, guys. It's gonna be so, so very important in the next month because a lot of things aren't gonna make sense yet. 
and um, it will make more sense in May. So just keep that in mind. Um, I will do the video for Pisces. Don't worry, that is going to be coming next. Like I said, I didn't wanna give you guys like a two hour video. So I'm gonna be working on that over the next couple days to get that out for you early. So you're ready. It's super magical. So like this is a new moon that I would definitely recommend being prepared. If you wanna do uh, water ritual magic, if you wanna do cleansing, if you wanna start a detox, if you wanna start a new spiritual routine, depending on where it falls in your chart, I'll talk about it for each of the 12 signs. Um, do something. That's why I want to get the video out early so you guys can be prepared because you want to ritually do something that's going to be magical. So however that may be, for some of you guys, it might be, you know, painting a collage. For other people, it might be actually initiating and starting a new project or joining a gym membership or starting yoga classes, whatever it is. So I'll let you guys know how it's going to affect each and every one of the 12 signs. Uh, next week, like I said, I'm going to have, I have so much content. New moon's coming out, so I'm gonna do that. We're gonna do for weekly next week on Sunday, astro weather for all of March. I just finished the horoscope, so you guys are gonna get everything next week. There's a ton of content coming out. Let me know, how are you guys feeling with this energy? How is it affecting you? Um, was the flow chart helpful? Did it make sense? Check out my social media, I'll make sure to post that. So if you guys wanna save that, so you can plaster it on your wall whenever you Pisces out and you spiral and you're like, what's gonna happen? Refer to the flow chart. Keep reminding yourself that where we're going is Taurus. It doesn't matter what happens between now and then. It doesn't matter what falls apart. We're going to wherever Taurus is in your chart, but there's gonna be a few bumps along the way and you have to believe it before you see it. Go listen to this song. Let me know if that helped. Um, this week on Saturday, we're gonna be doing live readings. It is going to be astrology this week. Uh, please do consider joining my memberships. It helps me make more content. If you guys have been watching the channel, you have seen more and more and more content. I took a hiatus for a couple of years. I'm now back. My goal is to be able to make content almost every day. I'm doing so much more and um, really excited to be getting ready to launch within the next month my astrology study club for beginners astrology. If you check out my links below, there's a newsletter. You can input your email. You will get an email as soon as I'm taking signups. It will be limited, but if you wanna learn astrology, you wanna learn it with me, you want to make astrology make sense so you can use it in your life to empower you, please do consider joining my newsletter because that's going to drop in the next month. Um, and if you'd like to book a reading with me, check out my links below. Check out my website at beyondtheveiltarot.com. Full hour, half hour, single questions, whatever you guys need. They're going to be um, live over Zoom. Or if you, if you um, have a question request, I'll send you an audio recording via email. Uh, do consider getting on my schedule. I'm usually booked out four to six weeks at a time, but I'm always happy to see new clients. Otherwise, I hope this week is good to you guys. I hope you guys do believe in magic and do all of the uh, vision boarding and planning and get really excited about what the future is going to look like because it is beautiful. Otherwise, I will see all of you guys very soon. Take care.